Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the new AMD Ryzen 3 4100. It's got four cores, eight threads, cost about £85 here in the UK and it fits into the tried, tested and popular AM4 socket. It's a Zen 2 based part and it only supports PCIe 3.0 which I just had to mention in case you thought about pairing it with the low cost RX 6400 or 6500 XT. You know, the ones with a PCIe X4 interface. The cards that will perform worse with PCIe 3.0 systems than PCIe 4.0 systems. Absolutely magnificent start to the review. The i3-12100F might be a bit more expensive, about 10 to 20 pounds here in the UK, but if you can spare the extra, even if you have to turn over every sofa cushion in your house in the hopes of finding some long lost change, then please consider it instead. But let's not be too hasty. After all, the price difference might vary quite a bit where you live, and saying just spend the extra is sometimes easier said than done. So before I run a few comparisons, let's give the Ryzen 4100 a chance to really stretch its legs, in pairing with my RTX 2080 Super. This should let us get the most out of this new quad-core contender. I won't be overclocking anything today, this is a look at the out-of-the-box performance. So as I mentioned, this costs about £85 here at the moment, the MSRP in the US is $99, but hopefully it'll retail at less than that, or at least drop in price over the next few months, considering the performance. I'm getting deja vu, I'm seeing flashbacks of the Ryzen 3100, you know, that 2020 CPU with more L3 cache. Okay, enough roasting the Ryzen 4100. In its own right, it can play modern games, even CPU intensive ones like Cyberpunk here. It will suffer a bit with crowd density set to high, especially in busier areas like downtown Night City, but the average frame rate is fairly decent and the 1.1% lows are okay. As I said, I'm getting Ryzen 3 3100 or i3-10100F vibes here. When Intel launched the 12100F, it really re reinvented the quad-core market, and I think with this, the 4100, it's too little too late. You could argue that yes, it's more comparable to an i3-10100F, and I'd compare the two if I had one, but the question really is, why? Why not release a real 12100F competitor instead at this price point? I'm sure that will come eventually. I'm sure competition at the lower end will heat up a bit over the next year or so, and I really hope it does for the sake of consumers with less to spend, because this chip isn't progress. In Far Cry 6, the results are again okay. The average is over 60 and the 1% low isn't far off, so it's by all means playable. Realistically, you'd want to pair this with a more mid-range graphics card at most, maybe a 6600 or RTX 3050. I wouldn't go with the 6400 or 6500 XT for the reasons mentioned at the start, and a higher-end GPU would be wasted, like this one is. You'd have all this power spare and nowhere to put it. I guess if you want a quad-core chip and you want to play the latest games, then this will do. I don't really know what else to say. GTA 5 runs well at very high, but it is quite old now, so that's no real achievement. I'm really struggling, but we must go on. I actually paid for this CPU as well, by the way, so my own £85 has gone towards this video. I'll be reviewing the 6 core 4500 at some point too, so yeah, wish me luck. In busy towns or cities like Saint Denis here in Red Dead Redemption, this will cause the CPU usage to reach 90 to 100%. That said, Red Dead 2 ran quite nicely, and what you see here is just a snippet of overall performance, of course. We actually saw almost 100 frames per second with this chip. I've said it before, Red Dead is very complacent, I guess is the word, in terms of its CPU requirements. It'll run well on a solid quad-core, and it'll run even better on a more powerful quad-core. If I bought one of these just to play Red Dead, I'd be fairly happy, even if the performance does drop in more heavily populated areas. That is a given though, and it's far more noticeable the less cores you have, but by no means is this game ever what I would consider unplayable. 
Deathloop felt okay to play, but there were some problems. You may have noticed the low GPU usage. This is because of the CPU bottleneck in this test system. As I said, an RTX 2080 Super pairing isn't realistic, but it does mean that we can get the most out of this test processor. It was a far from solid 60 FPS gameplay experience here, even with this high end card in the PC. Forza Horizon 5 actually feels quite nice to play. A decent average here with not so bad percentile lows. There will be some issues when loading races or leaving the initial Horizon arena at the start. I think that's what that's called. I noticed some stutter occur, but it cleared up quite quickly. And after a little bit of gameplay, Forza Horizon 5 on the Horizon 3100, 30, what am I talking about? 4100 isn't too bad at all. Now though, I want to throw up a handful of comparisons with the i3 12100F. I know it's a bit more expensive, but I want to show you what that little bit extra can get you and why I'd recommend spending it, because although I think this is more comparable to an i3 10100F, like this, that too will have a few issues with the newest games in terms of slowdown and stutter in more demanding scenes. So it would be harder to recommend that as well these days. But if you want me to, I can do a proper comparison. As for the i3 12100F though, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's breathed new life into this entry level sector. And I think this was a much welcome and needed change considering the demanding nature of newer titles. In some games or in situations where you might find yourself more GPU bound, there will probably be a lot less differences between these chips. The differences would be more with the 1 and 0.1% figures as opposed to the average numbers, which as you know are just as important. A high average frame rate is always nice, but not if there's plenty of stutter to ruin it. No one wants that. Someone on Twitter made a point that because the 4100 is on the AM4 socket, it could be a more accessible upgrade. But if you've got an AM4 based PC, chances are you've already got a CPU that's better than this, unless you're upgrading from a 3000G or an older quad core with a lack of SMT. But in those cases, I'd advise going straight for a six core chip instead. That said, if you are looking to get on the AM4 platform quite cheaply, then you could buy a second-hand AM4 board and one of these and still play your favorite games. To conclude, the Ryzen 3 4100 is unfortunately too little too late. It will start and run your favorite titles and it will produce some respectable averages, but it's just very okay. Halve the price and then we're talking. AMD needs their own i3 12100F moment now. Something really special to add some competition to the entry-level market. That's all for this one then. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.